Why did those patients not actually book? Well, maybe they went for a consult with the oral surgeon. And that's why like, we can't do anything till they come back. Maybe they needed a root canal, or maybe we needed to have followed up with them on a financial plan. So now in that reporting, when you have a quick meeting, you can say 12 people did not schedule of those three went to this doctor for a referral, this, that, and to happen. And these three, we got to follow up on them. Tammy, financial coordinator, can you follow up and make sure that we get those people like back the information that they need to get the financing, right? And so now you have a process. This is Growth in Dentistry, a dental intelligence podcast where we ask the question, what does growth in dentistry look like to you? I'm Katie Polson, a dental hygienist and your host. Welcome. It's another great day in the dental world. It's uh, going to be a balmy 105 degrees today in Utah. I uh, hope it's a little bit cooler wherever you are. Before we get started, I want to invite you to join our Facebook Dental Intelligence community. Come join like-minded data nerds like us to learn from each other. Also, if you have a question for our CEO, Wesson Lunsford, about our product or really anything else, you can go to our podcast page at dentalintel.com and record one. We'll answer those in a future Q&A episode. Now on to our show today. We are continuing our conversation about filling chairs with existing patients um, with unscheduled treatment and all sorts of different ways. And with me today is my trusty co-host, Curtis Marshall, VP of Enterprise Relationships, and he's going to introduce our special guest today. Thank you, Katie. Uh, thanks for putting this all together, and I hope you, everyone else is having a great day today. Today, one of my best friends, somebody who I look up to, who I get to see, who I get to, whenever we get together, we have a great time. Uh, the one and only Dr. Anissa Holmes. Uh, we were kind of talking about that in the pre-interview. Yeah. Uh, but Anissa, thank you for joining us today. How are you? I'm doing great, Curtis. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks for having me, Katie. Oh, it's really a, our pleasure for sure. We're, we're really excited to be able to have this conversation with you today. Yeah, Anissa, amazing thing about Anissa is she's been a dentist. Well, she's from Louisiana, uh, New Orleans, uh, but she also uh, ran a, 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 runs a successful practice in Jamaica. And on top of that, on top of all the other things that she's doing, she also runs a awesome, successful, something that multiple people follow and learn from themselves called delivering wow. Uh, ever since I've known Anissa, I've loved that concept of delivering wow and how she incorporates all the different dentists and uh, team members to really delivering a wow experience. Mm -hmm. So uh, Anissa, I, I can't do it as much uh, justice as yourself. Tell us just really quickly uh, why you started delivering wow. Absolutely. So I am a real dentist. Um, <laughs> talking about that in the, in the free because he's like, Katie used to be a hygienist. And she's like, no, I still to. am a hygienist, right? So um, so for me, I, I when I first started my practice, I had this vision and goal, just like all of us to be able to help people, to be able to build a really healthy business where I can do things for my community, take care of my team. Like that was my vision, right? And through that process, I realized that the road is not straight. It's, it's pretty bumpy. It's pretty scary, um, not knowing how to run a business. And so I actually, um, in, in that time, discovered coaching and got into coaching, uh, having a coach myself and through the process and over the years have discovered um, how to grow um, and scale my business to the point now that I am working because I want to and not because I have to. I do have a dental practice, like you said, that's run by an office manager. But delivering while, honestly, is really all about helping colleagues to be able to do the same thing, right? Like the result that we want to get, that I want to get from, for colleagues is to be able to have freedom to be able to choose the lifestyle that you want, to have freedom to travel, to have financial freedom so that you can continue to invest in your business, whether it's going to be purchasing new equipment um, and being able to, to really fulfill the dream that you wanted to go into. And so the how we do that is by coaching, right? So we have a full coaching program. We actually coach about 80 practices and we actually help doctors become the CEO of their businesses. And we train the office managers of being that COO. 
um, training the teams on sales and marketing and profitability and accountability and putting in scaling systems, right? And so it, it starts off with that vision, but how do we have an execution plan? And so we're really proud because we've worked with so many practice owners that have that freedom now and have businesses that are running on great systems that are really running like well-oiled machines. So Delivering Well started honestly as a concept of my book, um, but it's really evolved over the years to, um, to a program, a coaching program where we're actually helping doctors to be able to grow and scale the practices with a proven plan very quickly. Yeah, yeah, she's really teaching great. them how to fish, yep. which is yep. so, it's exactly. not very common. Yeah, I love That's it. That's what I tell doctors. I'm like, I'm not going to fish for you, <laughs> but I'm going to show you exactly how to fish so that you can, you can actually grow and scale um, in, per, you know, in perpetuity. So that's kind of where we are. That's great. Yeah. Well, she's so obviously just from listening to her, she's a wealth of knowledge. And oh, today we're going to talk about, uh, tap into a little bit of the knowledge that you have on filling chairs. So patient cool. retention is one of the leading causes of practice failure. And I've heard you discuss this before on your podcast about leaving the back door open. Uh, yeah. But what do you think are the top reasons patients fall through the cracks? What'd you say? Okay. So I can tell you the reason why patients don't fall through the cracks is that we don't have a proven system or process for not letting that happen right? Anything that we focus on is going to grow. If we don't, it slips through the cracks. Okay. And that's just the bottom line. And that can be for retention. It could be for your accounts receivable. It could be for your doctor production per visit and like all of the KPIs that I know that dental Intel is helping practices to track. Right. But in terms of retention, the first thing is asking ourselves why your patients not coming back. And a lot of times it's because we are saying, let's make your next appointment. And they're saying, well, I'm not sure my schedule, I'll call you back. Or the patient doesn't yet understand how they're going to fit this dentistry yet into their budget. A confused mind does nothing, right? And so what we have to start focusing on, and this is really powerful with training our teams and our own mindset, is how do we provide for the patient the answers in their mind to the questions that they have so they can make a decision before they leave. Yeah. And so when we start looking at that, we start saying things like, now here's your treatment plan. We have four crowns to do. We have four fillings to do. We can do that in two visits, or we can do that in eight visits. Most of our patients like to do it in one or two because they know that they're a business owner. They work for a company. They have a job. It's hard to come eight times. So we just listen to our patients. We make longer appointments. Does that work for you? And they'll say, I, you know, yes. And I said, well, is there any reason why it wouldn't work? I already know they're going to say they don't know if they can afford it. I know that already, right? And so they may say, well, I'd love to do that, but I can't afford it. And I say, great, not a problem. This is what we can do, right? Many patients are just like you. They can't afford to fit it into their budget. And so how they're able to do it anyway is number one, they uh, actually realize they have a credit card, perhaps even a zero interest credit card. And they use that, right? Other patients, they don't have that option. So we can work it out for you to just pay a little bit over time, right? And so a lot of patients do that. And another option is we just create a plan. We have an action plan. We look at the budget and we say, this is what we're going to do every single month. We can pre-schedule you. So now you can go ahead and block your time at your business, at your office, at your job. You can plan your budget and we can execute right? So these are three ways that our patients are getting their work done, because I already know this is really important to you. We both know that, right? So which one of these three options do you choose? Okay. Mm -hmm. So now what's happened is that we've actually solved for them where they're confused because they may say, you know what? I do have a credit card. I can just put it on that credit card or tell me about option number two, right? And so now they're not leaving with a confused mind of how they're going to pay. So now you can move into action of saying, which do you choose, which is asking them to make a decision right there while they're in the practice. Okay. The problem that happens, ask me how I know. Okay. <laughs> I'm a real dentist and we've made these mistakes over time is that we just assume that they're going to call it. They're not calling us back. If they can't figure it out, then they're not going to figure it out later. So what happens is we waste a lot of time 
for our team members, we lace a lot of money. Think about how much we're paying our team members per hour to make calls to people that already know they're not coming back because they're already confused. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and we're trying to get them on a phone. We're getting voicemail. They're at, like, this is just a huge waste of time. Okay. So what we need to do is number one, we need to have a system and process, right? We need to let them know. We want to make sure that you, you've entrusted us for your health. We want to help you to get this done. So we're going to figure out a way to make this work for you. And we want to hold you accountable. So we're going to go ahead and let's look at the schedule and get you on the schedule. Right. So we've got to have the internal processes. We've got to have the verbal skills and we have to have a tracking me mechanism as well. Okay. So with, powerful. with all this, so two in yes. a it, is that what you're doing. And I love what you said earlier is that you're ultimately, you know what they're going to say. So you came up with a plan. Uh, we've talked about Before something that. similar to this and Katie and I have as far as verbal judo, you know, like when you're a judo artist, right? He's like, Hey, I'm going to kind of punch here because I know you're going to counter punch. So I'm getting ready for that counter punch. And when that happens, I'm going to take you down. Yeah. I, I, I'm going to kind of throw a little bait out there knowing you're going to do something and I know what you're going to do. Yeah. And so I already have a plan. I love that, Anissa. Yeah. You're basically, it's not like you're bait and switching. I'm not saying we're tackling or bait and switching patients, yeah. but ultimately- no, you're just Prepared, prepared for the Prepared. Yes. I love the way that you've exactly. put this together. You're, you're prepared. And in terms of in terms of this, this is case acceptance, but even deeper outside of dentistry, it, it it's it's a process called neurolinguistic programming, um, which is something that I have spent, I mean, I've hired so many coaches to understand how do you scale a business? How do you go from one to five, five to ten million, ten to hundred million? I've done EOS implementer training. I've worked with sales persuasion coaches to understand like how are people making decisions like to buy a car like like what are the what are the objections so that we can be prepared right, right. and so this is neurolinguistic program which is part of what we teach in our programs in terms of verbal skills and, and like how do we do that right so so it's really powerful and it can work for so many other things like case acceptance like like you already know they're going to say is insurance going to cover it so like it, you know you can say something like here's the thing Insurance is not going to cover it, right? But why are patients choose to do it anyway? And, and you tell them time, money, and, and, and peace of mind objective. Like we can talk about that on a whole nother podcast, but like this is really powerful stuff. And like I said, going back to the, the, the tracking, that is so powerful. Getting to the point and, and you want to be able to look at these metrics weekly, okay? In my practice and with our clients, we have a team member to go ahead and put in these metrics weekly into an actual scorecard. So it's outside of DI where they've got goals. If they hit the goal, it turns green. If they don't, it turns red. So now they know what they can discuss in that weekly meeting and they can solve it. But what's even more powerful is that with this, this how many patients that left last week without an appointment mm -hmm. is powerful because if they're doing this on a Monday, a team member takes five minutes, gets these metrics from DI, okay? Now they can go and do a little bit of investigating and saying, why did those patients not actually book? Well, maybe they went for a consult with an oral surgeon. And that's why, like, we can't do anything till they come back. Maybe they needed a root canal, or maybe we needed to have followed up with them on a financial plan, right? And so now that you have this next system, when the scheduling coordinator comes and reports this number, when you're having that meeting, she can say, we had 12 people last week that left without an appointment. I'm going to tell you, this is what happens in my practice. This is what we train practices to do. So now in that reporting, when you have a quick meeting, you can say 12 people did not schedule. Of those, three went to this doctor for a referral, this, that, and it happened. And these three, we got to follow up on them. Tammy, financial coordinator, can you follow up and make sure that we get those people like back the information that they need to get the financing, right? Mm -hmm. And so now you have a process. The problem is that the backdoor issue is because we don't even have a plan. Like we just don't even know we have a backdoor issue. And so now what happens is that people result to, oh, I need more patients. Now I know mm -hmm. I am known in the dental industry for marketing. I get it. Okay. Mm -hmm. And yes, I love marketing. Why? Because we have to let people know about our practices and it's important. And if we want to grow and scale, like I've just hired a third associate, 
we want patients for that third associate. So right. we continue to scale our business. Yes, we want new patients, right? But if we're getting 10 new patients a month and we have 10 that are not coming back, we are losing money on our marketing, That's right? It, and so Melissa. we really need to think about that. Yeah. That's it. She just nailed it. Mm -hmm. The reason why we're having a problem with people not rescheduling is because we mm -hmm. don't are filling chairs. Correct. The raw reason for that is because we do not know. We know that we have an issue with back to people leaving without an appointment and not rescheduling, but we don't know exactly what it is. And yeah. if you don't know it exactly what it is, then you cannot prepare for yeah. it. We have a Anissa, we have spot a, on. We have a chart, uh, a, a really great graph in, in our software called the new patient um, graph. And when you click on it, and as a customer success manager here at Dental Until, I did this so often with practices. I would click on it and it would show you right there. It would show you who was coming, who was coming in, who was leaving, all right there. And it was so eye-opening for so many people to see that because they thought, well, I had 20 people come in. And so how am I at negative growth? Mm -hmm. um, and, well, you think about it times, Anissa, yeah. if I've got a, a typical practice, right? If you start off with 500 active patients at the beginning of August and you get 20 new patients using your marketing skills or whoever's, right? At the end of that August, we should have 520 active patients, right? But we don't. Just like you said, we're actually losing. So what are you gaining and what are you losing? Yeah. And that's how to help fill chairs. Yeah. Katie, and I, and Anissa, and I love awesome. the part really is about communication. It really, it's just, it's so, you and I both know when you work in a practice, everyone is going over each other. There's just no time to talk when you're so busy, right? And if you don't have the systems in place, like you said before, then people are going to fall through the cracks. Yeah. And it doesn't have to take a lot of time. Yeah. Okay. Like, it, it, but you've got to guys, like who's listening, you've got to learn how to have an effective once a week check-in meeting. Okay. Take an hour on a Tuesday, right after your morning huddle, before you start your day, you can look at the numbers from last week. You can look at what work and celebrate your team for it, right? Make them feel good. They're going to work even harder for you and look at the one, not all of them, one or two things that are way off from your goals and you discuss it and you solve it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that now the next week, when you look at your numbers again, all of a sudden you're like, wow, we solved it. We mm -hmm. solved it. Right. And you can see the growth. It's so powerful. So like, and, and the power of these meetings as well is doctors. Like if you're listening to me right now and you get your team, who's constantly saying, doctor, how do I do this? I need your thoughts on this. I want to do this thing. Can I get your opinion? Oh, I want to talk about this new course. Like people are coming at you and you're probably feeling overwhelmed right now. Like your team is texting you and you're just going crazy. Right. Like, I, am I the only one that feels or felt like this. Like, I don't feel like that no. now because we have processes, right? But if you're feeling like this, take 60 minutes where you can have your team come and lay out all of the things that's important for them to discuss with you. You prioritize them and you look at what did not work last week and you solve it. You discuss it as a team and you work together because if I'm trying to see that bench rack there, it's mm -hmm. kind of heavy. Okay, Curtis, <laughs> it's heavy. And, and, and if I said, hey, Katie, um, can you help me? Like we might pick it up, but like if all three of us picked it up or if we had Weston with us or like Sarah on my team, like we can be like all the way across the room because with a lot less, with a fraction of the effort, right? Mm -hmm. And that's the power of having your team all understand what is happening in your business, okay? So this is not just for the office manager. This is not just for the doctor to get a report and look at it. This is a tool, okay? Yeah. A tool to communicate, a tool to actually create your plan and your roadmap to execute and to see if you have actually gotten the result that you desired. So uh, really, really powerful stuff. And I bet some people, you, you know, just to be a devil's advocate here, some people might say, well, you know, I don't have time for 60 minutes. I, that takes away one crown, right? But the amount the amount of, um, gosh, production, but only just like calmness in your life will exceed that, it seems like. No, let me just tell you. I, like, I remember when I got into 
like years ago, right? And I tell the same thing to my clients. I'm like, but you're telling me that you want more time, aren't you? you you're telling me you want to work three days a week instead of four. Like, are, you're saying that, right? Like, I remember I told my coach that and she was like, you want to work on your business or you want to work in your business. Like, you're going to take one hour and lose, if you will, an, an $800 Mm -hmm. in a crown or a thousand dollars in a crown. But what if instead you took that one hour and you discuss why your AR is an issue, right? Or you discuss and solve the issue of these patients coming out the back door. Would you have made more than $800? Yeah. Yeah. A lot more. Yeah. A it's just more. being, it's just, it's really just My taking your focus from okay. being narrow to really just broadening your focus. Mm -hmm. It takes, it takes us taking a step back and taking mm -hmm. a look at things yeah. and slowing down. It's totally mindset on that for owners. Like when they tell me I don't have the time, I'm like, you cannot not have the time if you really do want freedom. Like mm -hmm. this is so va valuable. The issue is that people have had meetings and they don't know how to have them. So they, they just go and it's a talking session or a session just talking about blame or like this person's not doing this or just discussing right. what the issues are. This is an issue. This is an issue. And then you leave and you like the next week, this is an issue. Well, that's a waste of time. Don't have that meeting. That's not the meeting exactly. I'm talking about. Yeah. I'm saying a meeting where you see the information and then you discuss it and you solve it and you create an execution plan. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> bingo, bingo, bongo. And that These takes training. Great, uh, yeah. 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 And Anissa, that's why I always love getting you and talk with you because you bring up some great points. And really the biggest thing that's hit me today is the fact that you're saying, hey, number one is know what you're going to focus on. Don't just say, I'm going to fill chairs, for example. Hey, we have a problem with paper. We're not rescheduling. That will fill chairs if we focus on that issue. And so th thank you for all yeah, this. Exactly. Awesome. awesome. Yep. So we ask the same question of every guest on our podcast. Everyone. And that is growth is personal. And it can mean so many different things to different people. And we want to know what does growth in dentistry look like to you? I knew you've touched okay. on it just a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. You know, growth, growth in dentistry to me means that you continue to provide an opportunity to serve your clients, your patients hard. Okay. In any way that you choose to. So for me, what that looks like is we are growing and scaling my dental practice where we're bringing on now a third associate. Okay, third associate means that our expenses, our fixed and variable expenses stay mainly the same. So now our profitability can increase. It also means that we can implement new services. She's going to focus primarily on sleep medicine. We're gonna save so many lives because we're gonna be implementing sleep and hardly anyone anywhere near my practice is doing that. We're gonna help so many people. That's, That's my exciting. Purpose in my life, right? But for some people, that's not what it looks like. Like I've had doctors that I work with and they want to grow and they want to have multiple locations and that's success for them. For some people, they are like, you know what? I want to work two days a week and I don't want to have, like, I don't want to have an associate and I don't want to have like multiple locations. I want to work two days a week and I want to earn what I earned in four days a week. And I want to have help of making that happen, right? So success is what it is to you. And that's the amazing thing about dentistry. Like when I first decided to go into dentistry, it was a pediatric dentist, a lady. And I was at UAB working in the summer before I applied to dental school. And I thought I was going to do medicine. I wanted to be a pediatrician. And she told me, she said, you know what? You can do pediatric dentistry. You can help kids. And still, and the great thing about dentistry is you have a lot of freedom. Like if you are in a phase of your career where you want to work seven days a week and maybe you have to, right? You can, if you want to work half a day, if you want to work three days a week, maybe you have, you're a woman and you're going to have kids. It's, it's your choice. That's the amazing thing about our profession. Mm -hmm. And the so amazing awesome. thing is we can have a business. Even I'm at the phase now I retired clinically two years ago. Why? Because I love teaching and coaching and helping dentists do the same thing. Like that's my passion now after 20 years of clinical, but guess what? I'm still serving patients in my dental practice, right? It's just looks a little bit different because now I'm in a capacity of growth 
through giving other doctors an opportunity to, yeah. to now do the dentistry, right? So that's what it looks like for me right now. And having a healthy business that I live in Miami now, I have a dental practice in another country that just freaking crushed last month. And I'm like, holy crap, like we served a lot of patients and there's a lot of profits there. And how is that happening without me actually doing the dentistry, right? It's creating these systems, creating these processes, having the right people, processes, and tools, accountability, um, and training for our teams. That's that's how we do that. Very, very, very well said. Very. uh, As always. Yeah. So good. Well, we could go on and on and on, and we'll have you on again because you were just fantastic. Please, (laughs) please come back. (laughs) But this has been Growth in Dentistry, a dental intelligence podcast. So special thanks again to our guest, Dr. Anissa Holmes with Delivering Wow Consulting. You can find her at deliveringwowbook.com. And if you go there, you are going to get a free book from her, which is pretty fantastic. And you can also, I would totally recommend finding her podcast by that same name same name, Delivering Wow. I listened to it religiously and I have before I met you. So I'm kind of fangirling right now a little bit. So thank you for that. Both links will be in our show notes. You can find, you can also find those links and other great information on our webpage at dentalintel.com. Thank you again to Curtis Marshall again for joining me today. And thank you to Tyler Johnson, our product specialist and sound engineer. I'm Katie Polson. Keep growing.